You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Living Jewishly Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Living Jewishly. This week, we're going to discuss the laws of synagogue holiness. This is the 13th chapter in the Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch. The Torah teaches us about the holiness of the synagogue, the Beis HaKnesses, and the study hall, the Beis HaMedrash, as it states, and my sanctuary you shall revere. This is in Leviticus 19, verse 30. You shall revere. It is very important to have a proper reverence and awe for the place in which Hashem dwells, and Hashem, Hashem resides in our synagogues, Hashem resides in our study hall, and therefore every person should carry themselves with proper dignity and have proper awe in these locations. The Talmud teaches us that the synagogue and study hall are called Migdash Me'at, a miniature or small sanctuary. As Hashem resided, His Shechina, His divine presence, in the sanctuaries of the Migdash, where we brought the offerings, Hashem's divine presence is also found in our miniature, miniature sanctuaries, our prayer halls, and our study halls. Our prayers, by the way, are equivalent to the offerings that were brought at the temple. Therefore, the following behaviors should be avoided in synagogue. Number one, idle chatter and idle conversation are forbidden in synagogue. And that means, our sages tell us, anything that is not a mitzvah-related conversation. Anything that is not a mitzvah-related conversation is considered idle chatter and idle conversation. All jesting, mocking, empty conversations are forbidden. We don't conduct any business matters in a synagogue. Business of mitzvah, like charity, may be conducted in synagogue. So if someone is doing a campaign for an important cause, which is tzedakah, that is something that can be handled in synagogue. We should treat the premises and conduct ourselves with respect and dignity. The halacha says we should sweep and maintain and clean the place properly. That means, yes, if a person has the merit the privilege of actually taking the broom and sweeping the the aisles of the synagogue. That's what Joshua did. One of the reasons Joshua, the disciple of Moshe, merited to be the leader of the Jewish people is because he didn't feel himself holier than thou, like, I'm not going to clean the study hall. I'm not going to organize the chairs, put away the sedurim, put away the chamashim, put them all away on the shelves. That's not unbecoming. I'm Moses' student. Someone lower than me should do it. No, no, no. Joshua said, I want, to be, I want to be among those who set up the place and make it pristine and make it clean. So if a person has the opportunity to do so, you see, I, I try to do this as much as possible with my children when we're walking to shul, sometimes in the entranceway. There's some candy wrappers, things. Pick them up. Make the synagogue holy. It's a special mitzvah to do so. We also light candles to honor the place. You know, there's a ner tamid in most synagogues. It's a mitzvah to have a candle lit all the time because that shows a special respect and honor for the place. Additionally, the halacha says that a father should not kiss his son or sons in synagogue so as not to diminish or distract from the love one is to have for Hashem in the synagogue. That means we shouldn't really be kissing anyone in synagogue. It's not the proper place to really be displaying our love for other people. You can do that in the hallway. You can do that in the, in the entrance, but not in the actual synagogue. Before entering the synagogue, one should clean their shoes. One should ensure that they are dressed modestly, befitting a holy place, and with clean clothes before entering. The Talmud tells us that one of the great sages would wear special clothes just for davening, just for praying. He would walk in before time came. Oh, oh, it's time to daven. He would change and get into his nice clothes because I'm about to talk to God. Would I come to a king, to a dignitary in flip-flops and shorts? Now, again, um, that's not to say that if someone does that, that their their prayer is diminished or that it's, it's, it's. But a person has to know for themselves w- what level they are at and to have the proper respect and dignity for the place for the synagogue. While it is permitted to spit on the floor in synagogue, when earth floors were the standard, it should be stepped on immediately with 
the person's feet. So if a person spits for whatever reason, the person has some phlegm. Today we use tissues. That's something that wasn't as common back then. Uh, so people would spit on the floor, but they need to step on it immediately. As a measure of piety, though, the halacha says, one should avoid spitting in the synagogue on the floor altogether. One should not use the synagogue as shelter from the sun or the rain. So it's raining outside, and I'm waiting for my ride. So what am I going to do? I'll wait in the synagogue so I don't get wet. You're not supposed to use the synagogue as a shelter. Oh, it's very hot outside. I'm going to stay inside for the air conditioning. It's not either respectful to make the synagogue just your shelter, your own personal safe house. One should not use the synagogue as a shortcut. Allah tells us you should not make it a prakmatia, a shortcut. So if someone needs to walk through a study hall or a synagogue, I need to get to my car. It's in the parking lot. And the only way to get there comfortably is through the synagogue. I can walk around the building, but that's less comfortable. You're not supposed to do that. So what do you do? If one needs to walk through the synagogue or they need to call a friend who is inside the synagogue, they should enter and recite a prayer or a verse or two or a Mishnah or even listen to the Torah being learned by others who are there or at the very minimum, sit for a moment in the synagogue since sitting there is also a mitzvah. And only then continue walking through or call the friend that is needed. It is forbidden to eat and drink in a synagogue. One should avoid sleeping at all in a synagogue, even for a short nap, even during the rabbi's sermon. If the nap would constitute a mitzvah, now since some people have a custom to stay in synagogue all night of Yom Kippur and recite praises to Hashem the entire night of Yom Kippur, and it's very possible they're going to doze off a whole night. They're staying in a synagogue praying. So in such a case, then at the very least, the halacha says, they should distance themselves as much as possible from the ark. If one is eating or drinking in synagogue for a meal of a mitzvah, means a su'udas mitzvah, like someone making a celebration of completing the tractate of Talmud, that's a mitzvah, eating that meal is a mitzvah, or a uh, sheva brachas, after a, a couple gets married, they have seven days of celebration, so that meal is as well a mitzvah. In such a case, so long as the meal does not contain lightheadedness or drunkenness, it's okay. Additionally, people who are diligent and regular learners in the study hall are allowed to eat and drink and nap or sleep there so that they can limit the disturbances from their Torah study. So if someone is sitting and learning all day and if they had to leave and go to their house or, you know, it would take extra time away from their learning. So they just doze off like this on their on their table that they're learning. So the halacha says that that is fine. But then again, it's only if someone is learning as their primary diligence of of occupation. This is what they're doing. They sit and learn, and you know, eighteen hours a day. Those who study Torah in the study hall all day may engage in any necessary activity in the study hall, but may not conduct themselves with levity there. And the last halacha, number 16, is when building a synagogue, a Torah scholar should be consulted on how and with what specifications the building should be built, as there are complex laws governing the entire process of building, from the funding to the actual height and layout of the building. So, my dear friends, this concludes this episode of the Living Jewishly podcast, The Laws of Synagogue Holiness. And I think in general, we should recognize that we're talking to the Almighty. We're talking to Creator of heaven and earth. We said previously that every person should have a set place to pray. Why? Because Hashem waits for him, for us there in our set place. Hashem loves our prayers. We shouldn't think lightly of synagogue. It's like, oh, someone's making our bar mitzvah, so I'll show up. No, no, no. It's a great, it's a great opportunity for us to have a conversation with God, to talk to God, to ask God, to communicate with God openly, us directly with Hashem, without any conduit, without any intermediary, we talk directly to Hashem with our own words. We say, Baruch Ata, blessed are you, directly to God, not blessed is he, blessed are you. That's such a special, powerful thing. Hashem should bless us all, that we should always have 
the proper respect, there's proper reverence and awe and dignity every time we walk into the house of Hashem. And our prayers should always be accepted. Amen.